Gustave Courbet, an influential French artist in the 19th century, to innovate the new realism movement and to create bold social statements. Gustave Courbet and his democratic eye revolutionized realism in the 1800s. His new form of realism paved the way for other movements to follow, such as Impressionism and Post-Impressionism. Courbet had a direct contact with the majority of the great artists such as Manet, Monet, and Renoir. Uh, even their artwork, too, was influenced heavily by Courbet, his personality, and even his artwork. Courbet's visceral paint application also opened doors for other painters such as figure and landscapes of the 20th century. Realism sometimes is called the naturalism in the arts, and generally it's an attempt to represent subject matter truthfully without artificially and avoiding artistic conventions or implausible, exotic, and supernatural elements. Born in summer of 1819 in a small rural town near the French Alps, Courbet grew up in an almost picture-perfect environment. At the age of 14, he took art lessons from a minor neoclassical painter, which he gave him most likely his foundation to react against. After deciding to give up his pre-law studies to try and catch his dream of becoming a world-renowned artist, he moved to Paris. Courbet attended a couple art lessons, yet still wasn't fully satisfied with the knowledge. So he took matters into his own hands and taught himself by mirroring paintings of the greats that were in the Lou. While art students wait years before picking up a brush, Courbet made his own rigorous schedule to perfect his craft. His ability to recreate some of the top paintings in his time set him up for becoming one of their competitors. When Courbet threw himself into his personal vision of realism, which rejected any classical treatment or rhetoric, he wasn't getting much appreciation from critics as he would like. He was so deep in his realist mode, he turned down an offer from the church to paint instead of angels. He countered and remarked to them, show me an angel and I will paint one. Following this, he was presented with, with a gift from Paris Salon that became jury free for one whole year, which allowed him to set his 10 top artworks to them and present them to hopefully win a lifetime membership of an automatic acceptance into a museum and finally get his artwork packs to these old school critics and to get his art out to the public. Without this jury free year, most likely burial at Orens of 1849 would have been most likely rejected for his lack of classical rules. Burial at Ornans, now seen as one of the greatest genre paintings, depicts a funeral of Courbet's great uncle, which took place in the family's birthplace in Orange, which is a small town near France. So instead of using personal professional models, which was the norm back then, he decided to paint the, the actual townspeople that came to his uncle's funeral. Thus emphasized the truthful character of realism Corp, they believed. This painting was painted on a massive canvas stretching 10 feet by 20 feet, a format traditionally reserved for the prestigious religious paints such as The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci or Wedding Feast at the Cana by Pablo Versanis. This massive artwork drew many people from all over, and which irritated a lot of the quote-unquote purists of classicalism. But the life-size mourners do not indulge in any dramatic gestures of grief or any emotions that suggest any nobility of character. Which Courbet wanted to mimic the real emotions during the live funeral. Several mourners appear as if Courbet intentionally made virtue out of ugliness. Despite his modernity, burial at Ornans includes a number of traditional compositions. First, the picture plane is deliberately narrow and crowded in order to accentuate the monumental scale of the occasion. Second, the silhouette of the mourners follow the line of the horizon and nothing is projected into the sky except for the crucifix. This indicates the fundamental earthbound character of life and that everyone is equal under God. 
So even though Courbet was a radical and distancing himself from the quote-unquote traditional way of doing things, he still showed respect for it and he implements the groundbreaking fundamentals. When Courbet entered the museum in 1850, he was met with a lot of hostile reactions from several artists and crit critics who felt it was scandalous for his such prosaic event to be represented in such a grand manner. On the plus side, the painting established Courbet overnight as the leading representative of the New Realism movement. Courbet movement was so renowned and moving that artists all of, of all medias around the world try to replicate his artwork, such as the great Desperate Man. The Desperate Man by Courbet was one of the most influential pieces he's ever done. It depicts a man in great despair and in great detail of grabbing his hair and his head, looking at you intensely with his eyes. Courbet chose to put the viewer in the driver's seat with the man staring straight at them, and it can either be viewed as a viewer looking into a mirror or looking into the man's eyes and feeling his deep emotions. Simply turning the canvas into the landscape mode already sets a tone of some sort of expression. Courbet's vision of realism heavily influenced other artists to come and can be even seen today. Courbet led the realism movement in the 19th century in French paintings, committed to his paintings only what he could see, and rejected all the academic teaching he encountered, and to change how art is expressed today.